Like WWE. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. Uh, we'll give it another minute or so, and then we'll get it started.
right, so we're going to get started. Yeah. All right, so just to get a feel of the room, I'm going to ask a couple questions. We're also going to do some giveaways because we always do that. We want a very uh, interactive. We got a legend, Big, Big Daddy, comes in the building with something. Big Daddy! Big Daddy. Look at that. Why oh, are they here anything? Of course, you're old. 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 All right, really quickly, so a couple things, very interactive, we're gonna do some Q&A, so we'll uh, give you guys a lot of time to do stuff. First, we wanna get a feel of the room, we wanna know who's doing what. We got a little bit about where uh, people are from, so hey, you guys all right? You guys wanna, wanna roll? All right, um, let them know, East Coast. <laughs> um, really quickly, all right, so how many people, feel like, I would like to push the envelope, feel like they use their social media well? Hands up. That's a loaded question. How many people are really poor at their social media? Okay, more than that, all right. How many people in between, somewhere in between? How many people will not raise their hand no matter what I ask them? Okay. All right, so uh, today's panel is about uh, vlogging, social media, telling the story. It's gonna be a little loose. We're not just being clearly uh, vlogging. I know, I'm sure you guys have a lot of other questions. Uh, last year we had a social media panel and it was amazing at how many people did not participate or record anything that they did. Uh, we have a couple of people that I'm gonna actually uh, point out from the audience too because uh, some of them really stepped it up last year. So that's what we wanna do with you guys today. Uh, we're also gonna ask a lot of questions. And in addition, uh, I'm gonna give away a, two Amazon gift cards, $25, all right? So, yeah, we'll do that. So, the more interactive you are, the more you get, uh, what? I didn't get, I didn't get, I didn't even get to make it to the floor because they said we started at two. I was gonna grab some heat, some stuff. And I was gonna tell you where I was going. Tomorrow we have a panel, 3 p.m. Edits, mashups, remixes, and I'll be giving away gear, I promise. I promise, 3 p.m. If you're not in this room for that, you're out of your mind. The man is a genius. All right, so uh, really quickly, just so, you can, so uh, just to get familiar with me, my name is Koba. I run a weekly show called Tweak Music Tips. It's kind of like a live stream podcast. We do repurpose the podcast stuff. Uh, we interview like uh, A Track, Qbert, Jazzy Jeff, Scratch Bastard, all these people, and then we have uh, manufacturers on. So anybody, who's how many people are on Twitch? Do you guys have you guys watched the show on here? If you have not, it's okay. Yeah, all right, cool. If you're not following us, make sure you do Tweak Music Tips. You'll, you'll learn a lot. We just gave away $2,600 worth of gear, and I'm giving away uh, Hercules T7 this coming month. So. All right. <laughs> all right, so um, as for the people that we have on today, I'm gonna introduce them. So we have the one and only Nick Spinelli. A lot of, um, I'm really, really proud of this guy. I'll tell you why. He, I've seen so many, so much evolution of what he's done, and now he's working with uh, brands and stuff like that. And that's something we talked about that you, you told me you wanted to do. So, proud of you, brother. Yeah. So, introduce yourself. Two people in the room that don't know who you are. Hi, I'm Nick. And where are you from? <laughs> Here. <laughs> Welcome. I hope it smells nice for you all. Welcome. <laughs> First off, where's my introduction? I was gonna introduce like you were like fawning over Nick and then you come to me and you're like, say something. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I did this last year and you made fun of me, but he said, oh, you already said everything. He did one of those. So Cleveland Terry's an influencer, he does uh, YouTube, he's done a lot of stuff on uh, Instagram now. Uh, he does stuff on Twitch, which is really cool. Very interactive. Uh, funny story, I actually DM'd him during the, the pandemic, and uh, at first he was really nice, and all of a sudden he goes to me, and you know, you heard crickets, but later on he was on my show, and he laughed about it, and we got to be really good friends. But no, he's a, a really, really good uh, friend and influencer, and he cares about the people, so make sure you guys follow him. Go ahead. Oh, 
Uh, I'm Cleveland Terry, out of California, not Cleveland. Uh, glad to be, I have to say it, you don't have to say it. Glad to be here, uh, yeah, doing some YouTube stuff and some IG stuff and hang out with these guys when I can. So, thank you. All right, so we got my guy Jersey Born here, DJ Bar, and uh, he's doing a lot of great things on YouTube. Uh, his vlogs just got really, really popular, uh, and that's how I got familiar with him. And uh, so we are, my brother. Yeah, uh, hi, I'm DJ Bar. <laughs> that's it. Where you from? I'm from Nicaragua, but I was raised here in Jersey, so you know, Jersey's home. Jersey's home, here we go. All right, cool. So today we're going to start off with vlogging, and the whole idea of vlogging is, and not just vlogging, let's like, look at it like that, but uh, I want to have somebody in the audience, we're going to be given an Amazon gift card, so more interaction better. Um, what is a brand? When you think of somebody's brand, like when you're a brand, what is that? Raise your hand. Go ahead. Yeah, boom, go ahead. Identity. Identity, go ahead. Your image. Image, okay, cool. So what most of the DJs that I find when we do our live stream and we ask people about their business, etc., most DJs don't do two things. They don't consider themselves a brand and they don't treat their brand as a business. So that's two of the things that are missing. So we're hoping to tie that today and I think these three guys are great. So, um, Nick, let's start off with the early stuff on, you know, obviously you have your SCE, uh, SCE story. Uh, what are you talking about that one on like how you were, like you remember how we met and how you made your mix, you got down with Jenna and you started to kind of do that. And then how you started your social media to kind of get your more eyes on your brand. Uh, okay, origin. Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, we, we first connected because you mastered the mix that I wanted to make for SCE at the time um, to be on their like mix cloud or whatever. And then like when I joined SCE, um, I was very intimidated because like all the guys there were so crazy in content like they had every type of video ever you know if a couple like, i was thinking to myself like why would a couple book me when every other dj here has dozens and dozens and dozens of video and footage and proof of them like crushing every gig ever so you know me being very like intimidated like holy shit like you know like you know i wanted to like have some value and that i started i thought the because it takes, when you book weddings, it takes like a good nine months. You know, you book them a year in advance, whatever, it takes a while for you to get to those gigs. I didn't have that time, so so I can book weddings in the first place. I decided to start doing tip videos. I had some like bold things, I uh, bold opinions I wanted to yell out there, and I figured like I'll start doing tip videos, and then the couples will see the tip videos and be like, man, this guy must know what he's doing, and then they'll book me because of the tip videos. And it's my way to get booked before being able to do the vlogs and do all the live wedding content because I didn't have weddings with this company yet. And you know what I mean? So like, I, that, that was my way. That's the only, literally the straight up reason why I started doing videos in the first place. And then I kind of fell in love with it. Kept, you know, kept pushing after that. So I love that story because if you notice, it's very intentional, right? He had a, a vision. Even when he told me about the mix, he's like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get in there, mix cloud, etc." And then after that, even the vision he had of how he wanted to be viewed and the content he was going to create. So that's a great example. Uh, Cleveland, how about yourself? Like, when did you, you know, because uh, he has a very popular and successful uh, event company. So how did you start kind of creating the content? Uh, tell me a little bit about your event company and then how you started to kind of tie the content. Uh, sure. Uh, so my event company is called Check One Two uh, Enterprises. We're out of California. Uh, we mostly uh, focus on bar and bat mitzvahs, although we do corporate and you know weddings and stuff. But bar and bat mitzvahs—that's our bread and butter in California. We do. Um, I know you know depending on where you say where you're going to be, it seems like a big or, or a small. And we do about 400 events in California, which in California is huge because it's very very saturated. Um, but originally. A lot like Nick, the way, the reason that I started doing any of the vlog stuff was because I got tired of answering people's questions. Everybody would come to me for all of the stuff. I'm sure you guys know, you just like me, people have questions about gear, they come and they ask you. That was happening to me and I just got tired of answering the same questions over and over again. So I said, oh, maybe I'll just start making videos on that. And then it kind of rolled on, rolled on from there. Awesome. Uh, what about you, Bar? So I know you've done a lot of gig vlogs, and that, come on guys, just go to the front, fast, 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 let's go. All right, so um, how did you start to kind of, 
with you know with your company, how you were doing things, and then also to document it because I think you're a great example of the documentation part. Yeah, so uh, I started out doing like just Latin nightclubs. I was pretty much DJing up and down Jersey, just doing Latin nights, Latin nightclubs. And then I just got burnt out. I'm like, man, when, when's Vegas gonna call? When's, you know, the festival's gonna call? It just never happened. So I wanted to get away from that. And at that point, it was like 2015 at that time. Uh, I just became obsessed with YouTube. I was just watching a lot of YouTubers. I was obsessed with that culture. So I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna do that. Uh, just so happened that, you know, daily vlogging was a thing, but you know, my life wasn't very interesting at that po at that point, or at least I thought it was, just because I was so, the DJing is all I've ever done since high school. That's, you know, that's all I've ever done. That's my only job. So to me, DJing was like rudimentary. It's just something that I did every weekend. So I was like, oh, you know, I'll bring my camera along to some of these gigs, and it just kind of happened organically. Uh, so my original vlogs, if you look at them, they're very like, YouTube-y, like old school YouTube. They're very like in your face, have, you know, fast paced, and they're very visual. They're, you know, it's just like a, a product that's easy to consume. It was never tailored to be a DJ, you know, channel, but it just so happened that because my life, you know, I was DJing so much that, you know, that exploded. Um, I was actually trying to get away from DJing, and in trying to get away from DJing, I ended up DJing even more. Now, you know, I. I, I, I have barely have time for YouTube now because I'm, I'm DJing so much more. So it's funny how that works, you know. I was trying to get away from DJ and I started doing YouTube and that brought me, you know, more DJ gigs. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so Kev, I'm gonna need you with the microphone in a second to the back there. Uh, my man, Eric, with the hat. So it's funny because last year we had the same thing and a lot of people were like, do I really wanna be out there like that, what does my business mean, etc. Now what's funny is we had Eric in the back and he was very opinionated about, in a good way, about uh, influencers and things and he didn't particularly feel comfortable about that. Testing. However, Testing. all of a sudden, I saw this gentleman start to, start to vlog. Now what's interesting is he has a partner that I'm friends with too, and the partner told me that his wife, he's been married to his wife, how many years, Eric? 15, 16 years? Wait, that's wait. Right. Yeah. Oh, right no. there, he's next to him, Jason. Yeah, don't give the wrong idea, Jay. Yeah, we, what, yeah, partners for about 15. Wait, so Jason, why don't you tell, Jason, I need you to tell them, what did your wife tell you that now, so all of a sudden Eric got the confidence to start creating some content, and he started showing just the behind the scenes, the setting up, etc. So tell me what your wife said. Right, that now, now been, so she, We've been married for 15 years and I've been a DJ for almost 30, so it's all she's known about me. And she knew nothing about what I did when I left the house to go do a job until my partner starts putting up videos and she's like, oh my God, that's what you guys have to do? And none of his content is the actual party with people dancing, it's everything else. Yeah. And I don't know what how that was a positive spin, but it was eye-opening that she was like, wow, this is what you guys do. And it, it was like, I thought you knew. Because we just assume people know, and that was that's that story. Yeah. So there's two there's two parts. I'm gonna get to Eric in a second. But there's two parts to the story. One is that not everybody could be the face or the one that's gonna speak about it. But what's cool is you can find whoever it is that's good, better to do that, and then do it. So Eric, what gave you the confidence to do? It? So believe it or not, Rachel Lynch, because okay. I don't want to spend my time. Excuse my voice, by the way. <laughs> I don't want to spend the time editing and making all the fluff. And when she went up there and was like, listen, just shoot and be authentically you. Don't edit it. Just, you know, once you have a couple drinks, just show people authentically what goes on. And like Jay said, all the behind the scenes stuff, clients, uh, even people that are not in the DJ industry were like, oh my God, like I can't believe that's what you do from the, from the drive to the loadings. Like no one gets to see the kitchens. They don't get to see pushing the road cases. Yeah, I mean, yeah, getting caught in, getting caught in the rain. Like Nick, um, showed one time about having, you know, how the, the panic that we have when you have a ceremony that's outside and you know, you know the rain's coming and of course the bride's like, it's not gonna rain, I promise it. But meanwhile, the clouds, it's, it's starting to rain. So yeah, that was it. So now I just, I just put content out. I don't edit it, I don't care. People either love it or hate it. It is what it is and that's it. That's cool. Now, how, is it, how does that help with the, the you know, your clients? Has it helped ever or have they ever commented well, about it? Yeah, I, I also started to do it because what I wanted to establish was, like Jay said, we've been doing this for almost 30 years. Next year will be 30 years that we've been in this industry. We've seen it, it evolve and change. And I was always like, no, I don't want to do this, but you have to put yourself out there. The, the brides want to see And My goal was 
to, especially last year, I concentrated on having not necessarily a picture of me or my gear or, or my whatever, but a picture of my clients. So like even Nick gave me some inspiration to say that like these people go on there and see that Eric K, you know, did 78 weddings last year. And how do they know I did that? Because every party I made sure I had a picture of the bride and groom at their dais or the bride and groom dancing or something to say from that party. And no matter how good or not good you are, for whatever reason, just like back in the day, having a brick and mortar made you more established. Now when you have social media presence, people just think like, oh, this guy's not fly by night because obviously he's posting that he did, you know, 80 parties. I love it, thank you, thank you. Round of applause for this guy, come on. Yeah. Everybody who's here, come on, this side. You guys are coming to the camera, come on, come this side. Everybody over there, on the wall, come on. Yeah, everybody on the wall, come on, that way. Come on, come on. Just sit over there at the last. Party's over there, party's over there. No, because y'all walking in front of the cameras and stuff, so I just want to make sure. Keep going, come on, don't be shy. Come on. Be good. All right. The last two, come on. Don't make it weird. <laughs> All right, so gentlemen, now, now what's important about that, I just wanted to kind of give it context, but do you see, because of last year's panel, right, Rachel Lynch wasn't able to be here today, but uh, it was a little bit of inspiration, and he's just one uh, story. Now, mind you, out of the people that I got to meet last year, there's about eight. So my question to you, because this is where the hard part is, right? As you're figuring this out, what are some of the things that, like, you tried, didn't try, didn't work, uh, revamp? not part of who you are after a year, and you're like, ah, I don't want to do this anymore. Give us a little bit of that story. Um, yeah, it is a lot of like, you're throwing darts the entire time. Um, I mean, just at the bait, all right, when you start making content, the basic level of just how to film, and how to film where it's like, you don't have so much content to go through and edit later, like, you know, f filming more purposeful, having more of like a idea ahead of time, and you kind of learn like, when I do YouTube, I already have my thumbnail and the title of the video before I ever film. Every single time. I know what my thumbnail is going to look like and I know what the title of the video is going to be because I incorporate that with that. And then, like, I have an entire game plan. Like, I literally write a, like, if I'm going to do a dumbass skit, I'm writing a whole script. You know, if, um, you know, when I do reviews and stuff, I have bullet points. I have everything I go through. Like, it's literally like a homework assignment. Like, I have everything leveled out and I'm very organized with it because otherwise, you will literally drive yourself fucking nuts. It will take you hours, days to days and days to edit it. And then eventually, like, you're just gonna wanna take yourself out. You end up not putting out the video at all. There were so many videos I filmed that, you know, I felt like could have been solid, but they were so, like, intent. Like, I, I just, I fucked up. I just filmed everything. I filmed too much. And, like, I ended up, I'm, I'm not editing this. I don't have the time. I can't do it. My girl will kill me at this point. Like, I, I can't take any more time this week and then I throw it in the trash, you know what I mean? So just like really like thinking of a game plan overall is very, very important. And that's like something, once you figure out your flow, your workflow in general. Your, your efficiency, basically. Exactly, you're gonna do it more often because like at the, at the end of the day, you have to be a psychopath. Like you have to make hundreds of videos before anything like you have to just keep like the consistency is everything and no one's gonna be consistent if it sucks. You know what I mean? And, and, and part of making it not suck and actually enjoying the process is like, you know, ironing out your workflow and having a good workflow with all that, so like. And, and also, I will say this, because a lot of people ask me this question, like, I wanna start YouTube, I wanna start this, how do I do this? And, and I know it's, it's dumb and it's obvious, but the first thing is, you have to start. You have to just start making the content, it's gonna be trash. Just be aware of that, it's, it's gonna happen, and then you will see it and go, ah, you think it's amazing, by the way, because it's like looking at your, your child. You think they're beautiful when they're really ugly. You have no idea. But you just have to keep making that content and then you'll get better. And as you go back and look at your old stuff, you'll say, oh my God, I didn't realize how bad this was. That's because you've improved. But the most important part is it's not how good your content is. You have to make sure that you have enough content and when people finally notice you, because nobody's gonna notice you the first I don't know, 25, 50. <laughs> I, I mean, a part of that though is too, is like when someone notices you and you only have three videos, they they, don't have they're not gonna follow you. Yes. So like, it's just like, oh, he's got two videos, that's cute, and then they keep it pushing. It's when someone notices you and you have like 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, 500 videos to watch, and then you can binge all those videos. Yeah. That's where like the snowball happens. 
happens. That's where your content really rolls, and you don't get there until you have it. It's like a numbers game. You know, it really is like part of it's a numbers game. Yeah, and and the algorithm is there, and it's the only time the algorithm works in your advantage <laughs> is when somebody looks at your video and they go, "Oh, I like this guy," and they click on like. You ever notice that when you go back to YouTube, I have a, there's another video of that person that's popped up. Now, if you don't have enough content, they're never going to see you again. So don't worry about the, the first, you know, 25 videos. Just keep making them. You know, you can pull in your friends because when I first started, I pulled in my friends like, ooh, hey, I got this new video. I'm doing this vlog. And they're like, sweet. And I posted the vlog. And there was like 115 people. And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm on my way. I've made it. I did, the, I did another vlog. There were 60 people that looked at the video. And then I did another vlog, and then there was like 20 people. And then I realized, first off, ignore your family and friends. When you make content, you're not making content for your family and friends. Yes, they will smile at you and say, sure, we'll watch, and they'll watch for a little bit, and then they're done with you. They've done their job. Your fans come from the people that are willing to see everything you do. And, and Barr says that. Barr, you taught me that. Barr has always said, he was like, when I was starting out with YouTube, he was like, dude, don't tell anybody. Don't tell your friends. Don't tell your family because they're not going to get to, they're going to watch at first yeah. to support you and then they're going to be gone. And now you have just some dumbass subscribers that like aren't really like, you know, they don't care about your content. They're not DJs. Like it, your friends and family don't matter. Just start putting shit out there and just grow. And that's it. And like Barr taught me that a long time ago and I never advertised enough. And then like, I think it really helps. Like, yeah, it's it's really about finding your audience. And let's be honest, like you know, if you're not a DJ, you don't you're not gonna care about the stuff that we do, or like unless you have an interest in it. But uh, similar to what they just pointed out, the way I started, you know, is you know, it's, it's cliche, but like everything's a bit of a remix. You know, you see something, you get inspired by it, and you're like, I want to do that. So for me, when I started YouTube, I was really inspired by like Casey Neistat. So when I started making videos, you know, I'm like, I want to do what he's doing. It was a little different because my, you know, I didn't live in New York City. I, that's not that wasn't my life, but I was a DJ, so I made my videos look like his, but they were DJ related, and it was a remix in the sense that they were in his style, but they were DJ related. And I remember getting comments and getting bummed out. They're like, "Oh, you're just trying to be Casey Neistat, this and that." After a while, you find your footing, you find your voice, you find out who you are and like the kind of content that you want to make. And now I get people telling me like, hey, this person's trying to be you. Like they're copying your videos, things of that nature. So everything's a bit of a remix. So whether like, you know, you watch Nick's video or Cleveland's video, you're like, I want to do what he's doing. A little bit of it's like when you start off, it's rough because you don't know who you are. You just like, I want to do something similar to that. But like Nick said, it's like throwing darts at more. You know? Isn't it just You like, never know what's gonna stick and then eventually your audience tells you, like, you know, my like for me, I was doing travel videos and DJ videos at the same time, then my audience was like, Yeah, that's nice to know that you travel, but we don't care about that, you know. We wanna see this and then you, you kinda start figuring out what it is that you that you want, what it is that you want that up. I mean it's just like DJing, you know, you 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 look at your friends and you get tips from this person and this person and this person. You keep going, you keep kind of, you know, chiseling away at who you are as a DJ, and sooner or later you'll find your voice, you'll find that style where, you know, you can hear Nick DJ and go, oh, that sounds like Nick, or that sounds like Barr, because they, they have a voice now, they have style. And we all get to that point. It took me a couple of years doing YouTube to kind of figure out exactly who I was and what I was comfortable with, because you think you want to do everything, you know, and you think you want to appeal to everyone. You don't. You know, find what your voice is and stick with that, and then the people will just come to you. Okay, so I want to go into the elephant in the room, and I'm sure a lot of people, so show of hands, how many people are afraid to do this because of trolls or negative comments? Oh, nobody. Come on. Right there. there we go. Let's talk about that. They're liars. They're all liars. You know why? No, no. You know why, you know why they think that? Yeah. They haven't had trolls yet. It will change you. The more eyes you have, <laughs> the more eyes you have, the more uh, opinions you have. So let's talk about that a little bit. So let's go into some of the the troll. I mean, you love you eat that up though. <laughs> There's certain people, but trolls. Let's, how early on did you get that, and did it affect you? Not now, but I'm talking about the, the early. Uh, I don't know. I don't know when they came. They just they came when they came, and they never left. And I appreciate all of them. There's a lot of people that hate watch my content. Just watch it, but. That motherfucker came out with another video and just watched this shit. Oh, he's wrong again. I can't stand this bastard. I hate what 
like I love that. It doesn't matter to me at all. I, I mean, I eat it up every once in a while. If they really come at me and I get pissed off, I like I have like all these comments. I'll do like the other day. I commented and I was like, "Listen, I hope you get a belly ache today." And that was it. Period. <laughs> and that was it. I just let him know. And I meant that shit. And he actually liked the comment. He realized like, all right, you know, I was kind of being a dick back there. You know what I mean? Like, and then you just handle it like that. You just gotta. It's part of it. It's good. If the more trolls you have, the better you're doing in life. Guaranteed. I have a lot of haters. There's nothing wrong with that. We all have haters. Everything's great. It's all good. It's all good. We have haters in our families, right? Don't we all have like an aunt or uncle that secretly kind of hates on you? We all know. A cousin. We all have it. Just embrace it. It's part of life. Uh, see, I, what I love about him, this is what I started with, because he, he, he's built for this. You know what I mean? But I, but I want to go to Cleveland. Not that you're not built for it, because you, you have a very thick skin. I'm fragile. Uh, no, no, but I... <laughs> fragile like a dog. Anyway, um... No, but let's talk a little it's bit about fun. some of the, the hater that can kind of derail. Because it's a little bit, sometimes they go they go low and could get, you know. There, there's a lot of hate in the world, first off. And, yeah. um, you know, I, everybody goes through it. And um, I think the difference is, you know, sometimes people go below the belt. You know, being, being a black person, you know, doing this, having a lot of fans that are multicultural, multiracial. And it, it, every so often it feels like, and I don't mean, I'm not trying to make this political or anything like that, but sometimes um, there's an acceptance of who I am until I say something that somebody doesn't like. And then all of a sudden they start going low and then you have to kind of deal with that. And it is what it is. It, it's a part of life. We, we deal with it as human beings. Um, it used to bother the hell out of me. I'm going to tell you this for, for facts. Uh, and then I just started to realize that I'm never going to see these people. I don't know these people. They don't have any control or power over my life. So why am I letting them control my life? You know, so I just, I learned, um, actually learned this from Mojax. And you would think that Mojax never gets any hate. Mojax was like, I block so many people every day. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah, so you just start blocking people. If, you know, I, and I don't block everybody. If, you know, somebody just has an opinion that's different from mine, cool, that's what we're doing. We're, we're trying to create conversation, but as soon as you start making it personal, we no longer need to talk, you know, so. No, same with me, like with me, and I, I have super, super thin skin, so you can get under my skin super easy, so with me, it's like, you know, I'm blocking people left and right, like, I, you can't, the littlest thing, oh, you, that was a funny face you made, block. <laughs> That's it, I'm super thin skin. And it comes with the territory. You do need a bit of thin skin because you're going to get the hate. It's going to come, especially when you're just starting out. But for me, at first, I used to engage with it. And that was like the worst thing you could do. Now it's like, they don't know. It's like, all right, I'll never see you on my channel again. And they'll still watch it They'll because they can still comment, but their comment won't go through. So, you know, if you look at my blog, it's, it's insane. Like, littlest thing. I was like, ah, you know, I don't know how I feel about that. The rest was good. Locked. <laughs> I block nobody. <laughs> Let it the fuck on, all of you. Nobody gets blocked. I want your watches, all of you. I love, but, but you get where I'm going with this, guys. And, and honestly, it, it does get under your skin. It's easy to have an opinion. People behind the keyboard are a little easier to comment on little stupid things. So it just comes with the territory. And there are some people that have thicker skin and some that don't. So that's why I love the, you know, the, the different gamut of these guys here. So. Um, the next thing too is I, I think the figuring it out because I think that's something that a lot of people get stuck on, right? Um, how long? Because I've seen a lot of different for all of you guys uh, things that you guys do. Where did you feel like you kind of bar buried your footing? Like where where did it start to work? Where you're like, okay, this is good. I'm onto something, and then it went somewhere else. How long ago? What was it? Go ahead, Nick. Uh, oh, all right, go ahead, Cleveland. Go ahead, Cleveland. Changing it up a little bit. People yeah. are like this. Yeah, you're right, you're right. I want them to move their heads in different ways. Uh, no, when, when I first started, you know, obviously, I, I, honestly, I didn't even start with DJ stuff. I started with, like, iPhone stuff. I wanted to be the next, like, MKBHD. Like, that was like, let's do that. And um, I was making these videos, and my friends of mine were like, oh, your video was good, but why didn't you talk about anything DJ related? I'm like, I don't want to talk about DJ. I, I do that for a living. Why do I want to talk about DJ stuff? They're like, but you know, it, it's what you do well. So when I first started, I was making everything. I was making gig logs. I was making gear reviews. And 
the, the thing that I would say helped me is when you stop listening to people. Because everybody's gonna have an opinion about what you do. Oh, that was great, but you know what people really like if you do this, if you do this. And I'm just sitting there like, well, that's not me and that doesn't make sense and I don't know that I agree with you. But everybody has an opinion, you know, actually, the, the number one opinion, you probably, I don't know if you've gotten this, but people were like, your content's good, but you talk too much. Like that was a thing. And I'm sitting there going, but that's, that's, that's what I do. Like I talk, you know? So obviously I take it with a, there's a little criticism, but there's always some truth into it. And I said, okay, I probably just talk too much. So let me just economize what I'm saying here and, get, and just get to the meat of it. But you know, you just have to start listening to yourself. Everything that I've done, whether it be YouTube or TikTok or Instagram, not TikTok, TikTok hates me, but everything else that I've done, it's all been because I've listened to myself and figured out this is what I do naturally. Where do you get your best ideas? Like, where are you when your best ideas come to you? When you on the toilet or something? <laughs> you tell me. You tell me. Uh, you know what, mine come randomly. You know, that's the thing about Instagram. You know, people are like, oh, I love that skit, I love that skit. They come, like that, and I just shoot it. Like where right though? In there. Where? Easily in the what house. What are you doing? Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, I, 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 I do know what you mean. I'm trying to figure out where you're you going with this. Space? What? You say you're on space? <laughs> like I take 35 minute showers, okay? And while I'm in there, I go in. Like I'm just not, you know what I mean. <laughs> no, 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 no. You go in. Yeah. Yeah. Intellectually, oh, hey. you oh, sickos. Oh, Intellectually, oh, I go in. And, I'm, and I think of the craziest ideas in the shower, and I just want to know if you had a Musa place, that's all. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to get the mental picture out of my head right now. <laughs> uh, no, no, I actually, usually for me, it's, um, it's when I'm at my desk and I'm like, either editing a video or going through some stuff and something will just pop in, but a lot of times it's honestly from other people on Instagram. Like, I'll see something on Instagram and go, I like what they did, but I feel like they, if they had gone here, it would have been better. So then I'll, I can, sometimes I'll play off of them. Sometimes I'll see a meme, right? And I'll go, oh, that meme is funny, but it's not live action. So let's turn it into live action and I'll get a lot of response from that because it all, it all ties together. Either you read it, you see it, but that's, that's where I usually get my inspiration from, other people. Because that's the hardest part about content really is just like finding the next idea. You know, once you, I mean, I guess the real hard part is like finding your niche and like whatever, but then like once you have that, then it's like, fuck, what do I do now? You know what I mean? Like, what do I do now? How do I keep like, how do I keep this shit rolling? How do I keep it evolving? And it's like, it's really like, that's like the, been the most challenging and, thing. And the more, more you do it, the faster new ideas come. Yeah. You know, like it was hard all the time and then I started doing more and more and then every day something pops up, oh, I can just write it down. Because you look through life in that lens. Yes. Like you look mm -hmm. through a certain lens and you like kind of look at life differently and like in the form of like, what, you know, what, what, how can I get content out of this? Like this just happened, how can I get content? Yeah, and it, a little bit too is like trends too. Um, it, it's just a muscle that you just gotta kind of work out. The more you do it, then you'll get your footing. Like for me, it took me a long time before I figured out like, you know, the shots I need, what I'm gonna say, what it is. But now when I'm in the process of making a video, okay, I know I need this shot, boom, 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 boom. You already made the video. Yeah, it's, it's already in my head. And sometimes they won't even be in succession, you know? So I'm like, I'll grab the last shot first. Cause I just know, okay, I need to get this and then I'll shoot that. Um, but it's just, again, it's like a muscle that you're just gonna develop over time, the more you do it. As far as the ideas go, Sometimes it's just timing. Like, you know, right now everybody's talking about the Pioneer turntable. So, you know, a lot of content's gonna come out of that. Controller, a lot of content's gonna come out of that. So sometimes a little bit is about chasing the trends. If you do wanna ride a wave, that's also a good way of like, you know, of possibly getting a viral hit. If it's something that's very topical, it's very in the moment, that's what people are searching now. Then there's evergreen stuff where it's like, stuff that people are gonna search forever, where it's like, how to plug in speakers, you know, that's something that people are gonna search forever, whether you're starting, or, you know, it's just people are always trying to DJ, so you're, you're always gonna have that content, but those those ideas will kind of flow the more you reflect that. Well, I'm sorry we're disappointing. Thanks, guys. <laughs> you're dead to us, all of you. Blocked, every one of you. Get my name on this. Uh, I do want to add this though, and uh, I met Cleveland and Bar later, but Nick, Nick will know. So I'm a DJ producer, and my whole content, we started uh, Tweet Music Tips in 2015, was all about 
DJ producers, like DJ aspiring DJs into, going in, aspiring into production. So that was all the content we were doing. DJs, they were producers, DJs were producers. And then when I started this during the pandemic, I thought my whole audience was gonna be producers. And then all of a sudden it was like this DJ community and it's like, hey, you gotta do whatever. We just finally had, uh, and, and Nick said something really important. We started with interviewing artists, then interviewing DJs, then working with brands, and now we just had a DJ competition, which was insane. I mean, he's seen the numbers. But we had 607 live viewers watching us, and I've never even thought of doing a DJ competition, and I had guys live battling. And I'm like, what am I doing here? But, it, but the, what it, the point to that is, is sometimes your audience tells you what they like about you, and then you kind of pivot to that. Now, I am a former DJ, so it does make sense. I'm not uh, you know, a non-DJ, but that also plays a part. So it's a, another example. Um, we're gonna do some questions in just a second, but I'm just gonna show you guys. So basically, this uh, thing works. So 76% of consumers now refer to social media to get more information about the product or service they're interested in. Companies should include as many details as you can posting your products and services. So the main thing about sometimes when we look at people's socials, right, is you don't know who they are. You see food, you see their baby, right, and it'll be like so-and-so event company. Another thing too, uh, last year I got, actually we're gonna do this today. Um, I'm gonna give away an Amazon gift card. So to this gentleman right here, the one right there, stand up. Yeah, you. I want, whoever wants a gift card, give them, give them your card, your business card. So last year, right, I, I went to like a hundred something cards. You know how many people didn't have an email on there? Some people didn't have a phone number. And it was so and so event company. So I was wondering, I was wondering how people would get to uh, communicate with them. So my point to that is, if you have your socials, what is your, what is your social say? I know, I just want to know. Terrible idea. Terrible idea. I should have done this earlier. Don't worry about it. It's all right. You'll be all right. See, now people are giving their cards and leaving. Ah, They're like, I'll win later. Cards. Keep going. Keep going. I hope you guys are ready for telemarketers. <laughs> <laughs> so, the point of this is on your socials, does it say what you do? Does it say anything about your services? Is it more food? Is it more date night? Is it your dog, your cat, etc.? That's the question. So, uh, that's number one. And then obviously we go here. Now, depending on who did this study, it's either gonna be TikTok or Facebook. So I think it's an age thing. Uh, but this one happens to say that TikTok is the top one uh, for trending stuff. But actually Facebook, uh, many of them were saying that it's for 2023 is the best. So anyway, my point to this is, uh, I'm gonna go into this. <laughs> Social media of choice, and we're gonna go into the audience, we're gonna do some Q and A in a second, but what is, what did you start with? I'll start with Bar on this one. What did you start with? You could po you could have possibly failed, right? I mean, and I then, started with, with MySpace, but. Uh, got it. And, and where did it pop off? Like, uh, where did it pop off? It was YouTube. It was MySpace pop off. <laughs> but I, I actually did upload a vlog onto MySpace. It's wait, 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 was it Justin Timberlake MySpace or the old school MySpace? No, no, no before Tom MySpace. Tom MySpace. Yeah. Tom, Tom eight MySpace. <laughs> Got it. So, okay, so that was, and then YouTube is finally when it, yeah, when it caught up. Yeah. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because uh, every time we have somebody on and they're popping on TikTok, somebody's like, oh, I gotta do a TikTok. And I'm like, okay, but you don't post on Instagram. You post once every two weeks. Yeah. So if you're not gonna post on TikTok, it doesn't matter. So the point is, is it doesn't matter the platform. It just matters if you're gonna post consistently and how the people engage with you. I'll give you another example. Rachel Lynch is the only person that I see her pop off on Facebook. Only person. Like insane. It's she puts up, she had an event, she had a sunburn and she had like 780 likes and, and a bunch of comments. And I thought it was insane. So, all right, uh, Cleveland. Yes. Where did you start uh, and end up? Like where, you know, cause you did a couple different platforms. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm consistently on YouTube. Obviously, that's that's the bread and money, but bread and money, bread and butter. Uh, but IG, I've made a very big push on. Okay. So Reels has been kind of my my gateway, and um, I mean, YouTube, I always had a good amount of subscribers, but Instagram, it took forever to get to 10k, like forever. And then, uh, I mean, you'll probably say the same thing. I was posting some Reels and re reposting people's stuff, and Next thing you know, 
I'm, I posted something four months before, and all of a sudden I'm looking at my activity and it's like follow, 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 follow. And I'm going up like a thousand followers like every every day. What is this? It was a random video that I posted uh, from, from another DJ, you know, that I, I liked and I posted the video. Didn't think anything of it. I got like, I think I got like 10,000 followers off of that video. Uh, I did the same thing like maybe a couple months later and the same thing happened. So my numbers are shooting up just because, and obviously my my, my viral, you know, DJ reels, they'll, they'll do well too. But the bottom line is I know a lot of people that for whatever reason think that if if a video doesn't get traction immediately, it's trash. And that's not how the algorithm works. You know, you don't want to delete content. You know, that content is, is what's going to get people to follow you after they've gone to your page and seen what you've done and, you know, checked out all your stuff. And it, but it's also going to potentially come back around. See, what happened was somebody who was big saw it, reposted it, all of their followers saw it, they started reposting it, and it blows up. So you know, you don't know what, what is going to become a viral hit. You have no idea. You know, some of the dumbest stuff I've ever posted is some of my largest viewed stuff. No reason. And it bothers me because I spent all this time working on this piece, and I'm like, oh, this is great. They're going to love this. And I post that, and nothing. And I post some stupid thing over here, and everybody's like, I love it. Do more of that. You can't win. You know, just keep feeding, keep feeding the machine is all you can do. Great point, Nick. Yeah, you know, want to tell us about? Oh, by the way, I got Nick my first. What we were I got my was. first Missy yeah, Elliott did. too. By the way, did you? She didn't repost me, but she, oh. she posted on my stuff. Oh. So we all. Oh, good shit. Thank Congrats. you. Congrats. Appreciate so, it. Well, uh, what was the question? <laughs> what was the question? I know it was So what? Uh, what platforms did you start on, and which one was the one that popped off? I also started on MySpace, uh, YouTube. Um, what happened? But then you got uh, YouTube and TikTok. They yeah, both I had some phone. early Instagram success. To, not like, like I would just get shared by like DJ City. I'd be like, oh fuck, DJ City shared my picture, and I'd get like some followers from that. So things like that like helped me build my Instagram early on, but nothing huge. And then like uh, YouTube, I've never went viral on YouTube in my life. Like YouTube is literally just like just just steady, just steady views one after another until it's slowly built. But like I built that up a little bit. I don't know. The first time I popped off, I guess, would be TikTok, and then I, I went viral on TikTok, and then I went viral for a, a DJ mix, like live, and then I just started reporting a bunch of those and kept that shit pushing, and then I just bled that over to Instagram, do the exact same thing on Instagram. Instagram also picked it up. And actually, recently, you can talk about Rachel Lynch all the fuck you want, but I got three million views on Facebook this past hey, week. Hey, okay. there you go. I don't know why though. Uh, so what I've been doing for a long time, like full transparency, what I've been doing is I've just been, uh, if I post on Instagram, it automatically posts it on Facebook. And no one gives a fuck on Facebook and that's it. And I just keep it pushing. And like, you know, I'll get like, you know, not give a, um, like three, 4,000 views per video, essentially on Facebook, which is the back, right? But like, you know, it's just basically my Facebook friends and that's it. Out of nowhere, 10 days ago, YouTube. So 10 days ago, one of my videos went viral on Facebook and got, I'm not viral, but like went 100,000 views. I was like, wow, that's crazy. Ever since then, chain reaction, I have like over 30,000 followers on Facebook when I only had like 1,000 and I got all these views. And I think, and I'm only telling you this because like I actually think they must have changed the algorithm somehow because they're all of a sudden now, Facebook's pushing more of the Reels content. So like, don't not post on Facebook as well. I wait, just wait, hold on. It's my Instagram shit on Facebook. I was, thank you, I didn't know who I was. But like, I appreciate that. But, oh. I'm Barb, sweet. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> thank you, thank you. Oh, wow, just oh, the one. Oh. Just, just Terry. Oh, just, just Terry. Like from recess. See, this is what I get. They don't believe, they're like, that's a city. Why would he want a city on there? Just call him Terry. That's his name. Oh, good. I know, like every time. But anyway, yeah, so don't sleep on Facebook though, because like they are pushing it now. It's like crazy. There's night and day difference in the last two weeks. Unreal right now. They're definitely trying to build that shit back up. But it's still Facebook. Listen, people are on that shit. They are. They are. They are. Do you know that actually in 2023 they talk about trends? Facebook was like on the top, and then a, cu a couple you would see was TikTok, but Facebook was up there. It's still, and it's still the biggest platform. It is. No, the it is. It is. And most users. And just most out of users. curiosity, um, around a round. Show of hands, who's on threads? See, in all honesty, you all should be on threads. Just open threads it. Threads is an unknown right now, yeah. but 
you, know, you got to stack the cards in your favor. He's Go right. Early. You know, I'm on there too. If I have a good funny thought, I throw it on there, and that's it. There hasn't been many. In case books. you didn't know what threads are, threads and you know, it's it's basically it's essentially Twitter. It's Instagram. It's Instagram's version of Twitter. You know, without all the hate. So uh, we all win. You know, so everybody should be on threads just because we don't we don't know what's going to happen with it. And the the people that succeed first is they were mentioning. I started on MySpace. I started on YouTube. You know, Barr was really early on as a DJ in the YouTube space, so he had access to far more people because there, it wasn't as saturated as it is now. So you got to get in when you get in. That's why they tell you. I, I'm not trying to carry V you, but it's facts. You, you do have to get in early. But but use it with purpose. You yes. know, if you have a company, just put like art something you guys always do. We always bring backup laptops. Blah blah blah. That could be a thread. You know what I mean? Uh, you 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 just pump to do so and so's wedding. Whatever. Like you know, you can use it as a company as well. Yeah. Not. I just had a cup of coffee. Yeah. You know. Make it. Yeah. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. All right. So let me see what else we got. All right. All right. Well, we gotta make sure we follow everybody. So that's the first thing. But uh, in addition to that, we're gonna start doing some questions. I know you guys have a lot of questions. Um, I really, I really want to see where you guys are having pain points. You know what I mean? Because I think that that's the thing. And uh, where I'm concerned, because I look at people's socials all the time, is it's not the content that you're trying to get to. So uh, I'm going to ask them this really quickly. Give us the 30 second spin on it. What do you do that you know that the end consumer wants to do? Like, how could somebody who's not that active or wants to become more active? How do they find the sweet spot that uh, with the end user wants to see, the bride wants to see, uh, other DJs want to see, etc. You, you, you got to look just into yourself and figure out what, what do you want to see, what do you like in your content, and then like and, and figure it out that way. Like I, I just I'm, I'm very introspective. I, I always look at something like would I want to fucking watch this? Would I want to watch this? Would would I find this entertaining? Would I turn this off? Like you have to be very and you have to like put your ego aside you have to like be able to say like that actually sucked or I didn't like the way I said that or I look like stupid right now or I look right you know what I mean you have to very like try and put yourself in your audience shoes at all time it's really just it's about having perspective like that, that's all once you get a really solid perspective then you it's gold it's literally gold because then you know what to give to people if that makes sense you know yeah that? yeah and I would say um what I've learned and what I stick by and, and when I see success from people, they all have the same thing and that's honesty with themselves. You know, when people watch you, they want to watch you. They want to feel like they're talking and, you know, and listening to somebody who they could be sitting on a couch next to, you know, and that kind of stuff is, I, I know that's where I get my following from because people are like, oh, I feel like we could just have a beer and I, and I go to the expo and it's just like, hold on, I just gotta wait, I'm filming. because. Because it, it, the authenticity is what sells. It absolutely sells. There's no way around it. Anytime you're fake, you've seen fake people. How many fake people do you follow out there? You know, typically, or you, you may, you, they may be funny. You follow something for a certain purpose, but if you want longevity, um, authenticity is where it's at. I think after the pandemic too, that cleared up a little bit. I think people flexing next to a Lamborghini with a Gandhi quote is like, oh, it's still there. <laughs> Good. What, yeah, for okay. people to see the end user, what do you? Yeah, it's, uh, it's authenticity, and then, like I said earlier, it's, a, it's just really about flexing that muscle. You gotta keep that and keep doing it, and then once we figure out your footing, you're saying, you know, you'll, the people will come. The people will come. Be uh, genuinely okay. you and create something that you know that you like and you enjoy. And maybe it's not thousands and tens of thousands of people. Maybe it's you know. 4,000 people that just love what you do and they're with you and they ride with you everything you do. I think people forget. Yeah, if you get a hundred, bro, a hundred well, rider dies is ridiculous. Well, when I always say this, because this was, this was big during, during the pandemic, especially on Twitch, people were like, oh man, I only have, a, you know, 60 viewers. I only have 20 viewers. I only have that. Lit, though. And then I think about real life, okay? Let's say you guys are out there and you're DJing a club, right? So you post your little flyer, hey, I'm gonna be here, and 20 people show up to watch you. That's amazing. You were happy, that's a success. You know. Now, think about if you're doing a panel, right? And I got 150 people in my panel. That's a success. But for whatever reason, we don't gauge success like that when we look at everybody else. It's gotta be thousands and thousands of viewers and thousands of followers. It's not important. That's just fluff. You know what I'm saying? You know, I can tell 
when I post something, even on my YouTube, that I know doesn't directly affect the entire DJ community, there's a number that I will hit every time if it doesn't. And those are the people that will ride or die with you. You know, that number right there. Yeah, I can post about a Rev 5 and I'll get, you know, 20, 30,000 views. It's a Rev 5. It's across, of course it's gonna get views. It's got nothing to do with me per se, you know, but it's those ones where you're like, ah, this isn't gonna do well. That number that you see, that's the one. Those are your people. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start giving away Amazon gift cards. Two, two ways to enter and, uh, cause I got two. One is gonna be from crowd participation and also from the follows. So I need you guys to follow everybody. I'm gonna there's an underscore I'm gonna at be, the end of my name, by the way. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's okay. It's, 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 it's almost.